Now, the second question is, we Filipino Muslims are a minority in our country, which is governed by non-Sharia. This year we will have our presidential elections. As a Muslim, is it permissible for us to vote uh, our leader of our choice that Muslims are candidates you choose? Hence, how would you connect or relate our situation as Muslims to the first question? Okay, I guess I got your point. In this particular situation, which is Muslims who are living as a minority in non-Muslim societies, do they have the right or is it permissible for them to nominate and elect nominees whom they know that by participation in this, by participating in this political uh, activities, that this person who is a non-Muslim or a Muslim who is not a practicing Muslim, or even if he's a practicing Muslim, he will not be able to change the law or the constitution. Is it permissible? We don't look at it that simple. Rather, we look at it based on the benefit-risk ratio. Masalih or mafasid. If it is in a society where your vote will not make any difference, then you should not participate in anything like that. But nowadays, votes really matter. And I'm not generalizing, I'm talking about if in your society, your vote and the candidate who is promising, is promising Muslims to make their lives easier, to allow them to practice their uh, religious duties uh, freely, to lift the sanctions and the restrictions which somebody else have put against them, to give them freedom of worship, then in this, in this case, uh, it is permissible and it is recommended to support this person when we have two candidates. We have a tyrant, we have a prejudiced person, we have uh, somebody who is, uh, is an extreme, he is full of hatred to Islam and Muslims, and he vows that if I win, I'm going to kick Muslims out, I'm going to ban building masajid, and I'm going to ban Muslims from studying Islam and learning Quran, and all of that. It doesn't make any sense to sit back and say, we cannot do anything. In fact, you can do a lot, because your vote in this case matters. Nowadays, whether in the United States, or in any other society. Um, statistically speaking, Muslims outnumber the Jews in all the United States of America. There is a candidate who is threatening, a Republican candidate, who is threatening beforehand that he is going to ban Muslims from this, he is going to crack down on masajid and on Muslims, he's going to prevent them from their basic simple rights. He's an extremist. Okay, while we have somebody else who's an open-minded, he is non-Muslim as well. But he says Muslims are like non-Muslims, they have all the rights of citizens to enjoy their uh, uh, free choice, freedom of worship, and all of that, and we have to respect them. If we say that we should not have anything to do with this, this is not right. Why? Because... If an extremist were to win the election, the entire Muslim society will suffer. And because they know that there are a lot of Muslims who are passive, and they say it's none of our business, but they're willing to, to take the heat and to bear the suffering and the persecution. So they brag about they're willing to suppress and harass Muslims more and more so that on the other hand, the extremists would vote for them. But when they know that there is 8 million Muslims who will not vote for them, and they have maybe a couple million or a similar number of their friends, of their allies, of their colleagues, of their employers, of their employees, of their students, of their teachers who have dealt with Muslims, and they know that they are absolutely great people, so they will support them in their votes. In this case, the nominees 
will compete with each other as who is going to serve the Muslim cause better or more. This is what politics is all about. So we do not nominate nor elect or vote because we're obsessed with the political operation. Politics is a bunch of lies. We all know that. And politicians before winning the election are something different than after. Very few would fulfill a small percentage of their promises. But it's a matter of standing for your right. It's a matter of here we're not choosing Amir al-Mu'mineen or a Khalifa. We don't have this choice. But is to minimize the harm. Is to protect yourself against the calamities which may take place as a result of being passive. This is the view of the Fiqh Council in Mecca several years back. And many of the scholars who are very well respected scholars. I'm just uh, sharing with you their view. May Allah the Almighty guide us to what is best.